Kate BYP was the third video in the Tune Circuit and Matching Network series on Foster's Matching Networks and Complex Transforms. I, I do this without going into the complex math because the complex math is way too much opportunity for mistakes, trying to chase that negative square root of one around. It, it's not worth it. Normally I would advocate learning a system like this and doing all the math here Doing the math is a serious mistake. Uh, maybe do it once to see how it works and then don't do it <laughs> anymore. Because this gets complicated enough. And a little difficult to follow. And you sure don't need that imaginary J causing problems. It's not sufficient just to go into the math. We've got to understand the principles going on here. And these aren't in the books. And they should be. Here are the principles. Number one. From Terman Radio Engineer's Handbook, a matching network must have pure resistive values at the ends, at the ports. The components in between must be purely reactive, pure X. If the ports are not pure R, then resistive losses appear in between. The X values, so to speak, become resistive, become lossy. In tuned circuits, R has no frequency component, and I've been hammering on that point in my, uh, especially in the antenna videos. There's no omega, or omega in the engineering notation is 2 times pi times the frequency in radians. Resistance in the real world does not care about frequency, irrelevant. In complex networks through these imaginary transforms, R takes on frequency. Strange stuff. And that's how the R value gets transformed. R becomes frequency dependent. In tuned circuits, series component reactances are inductance is plus X, capacitive is minus X. That's phase, what that really is. That's in, the admit, that's in the impedance form. In the shunt or admittance form, the signs reverse. In shunt or parallel, the inductive reactance is minus and the capacitive is plus. That leads to the very strange observation that in the admittance form, a capacitive reactance can pass current and the inductive cannot. Normally, we think of inductors pass DC current at steady state. Capacitors never pass steady state current. In theory, that's reversed in the complex world. That can lead to some interesting observations. The process to do this calculation, assume a series R and a series X in impedance form. That's Z. Change that to admittance. Y is 1 over Z. So that becomes 1 over R plus or minus X. Now notice very carefully the plus over the minus. That's a conventional form. Plus is inductive, minus is capacitive. We've just taken that, that series impedance form with plus over minus and inverted it mathematically. Then do a complex transform from the sum of the Y's back to Z. We, we cannot handle... 1 over x form. We, we can't uh, add those. If we're going to have several admittances, they got to be put together and put back in an impedance form. There's a transform <clears throat> with a general equation to avoid the complex operator, which is j, which is the square root of minus 1, which gets ugly. And that formula, that form, is r I made a mistake. That form of that equation, which leaves out the complex math, is R minus over plus. Not plus over minus. That means invert the sign of the X. Take the impedance expression R plus or minus X, change the sign, and put it in the numerator. No math. In the denominator, the magnitude of the square of the resistance and the square of the reactance. And the reactance is plus. That plus sign comes as a result of the J operator. We're just not sh just not showing it. 
that's roughly the equivalent of z, an expression in impedance, r plus, minus or plus x, over the magnitude z. Now, that's not really mag z, because the equation for mag z is the square root of the squares. So the magnitude z would be the square root of this. But we're not doing the square root part. So th this is not quite accurate, but it gives you the correct idea, hopefully. Now the inverse of that is generally proportional to the R transform value. If I remember my notes correctly in my calculations, take the inverse of this, the numerator, the magnitude of R squared plus S squared divided by that, and that gives approximately the value of the input resistance, which is generally higher. So that's a general check with a very simple calculation as to what the input resistance ought to be close to. Any additional transforms will raise that resistance value. So going from, in the Pi Network example, the 50 ohm load and the capacitor, changing that to the admittance form results in a transform with a magnitude of R that's roughly the inverse of that. Put that in parallel with the inductance, transform it again, and becomes exactly the input resistance value. So what's happening with that general formula is the, take the impedance R plus or minus X, invert it into the emittance form, 1 over R plus or minus X. Then invert the sign to R minus or plus X over the magnitude of the squares of the r and x value. That results in an impedance form up here of r and some number and x and some number. This becomes a coefficient of fairly large number, uh, 50,000 or something like that. And the result of dividing the numerator by the denominator results in decimal fractions. And that, that's what shows us we're working with admittance. An admittance or a resistance might be 100 ohms in the impedance form, but in the admittance form it might be 0 0.01. So the, the small decimal fractions tell so that we're working in admittance land. So divide, divide the numerator r minus or plus x by a that's in the denominator, and this down here is a. And then we add any other admittances in this form r minus or plus x over a plus r minus or plus x b, so on and so forth. Because additional admittances probably won't come up with the same value of r squared plus x squared in the denominator. And we can't add r and x in the numerator unless the denominators are the same. That's the rule for fractions. But the, these impedances up here by rules of adding impedances, we can directly add the R values and directly add the X values. So R adds as a total. The X's add or subtract depending on their signs. If this is a plus X and a minus X, then this X is subtracted from that. Then we have the R minus or plus X in admittance form. Well, we can't do anything that with that. We've got to convert it back to impedance form with Y equals 1 over Z. So take the result of this after making the denominators the same and dividing that into the, the numerators. Add that together. Y equals 1 over R minus or plus X. And transform again by our little magic formula, R minus or plus X over the magnitude of the squares. That puts it in impedance form. To keep the video segment short, I'm going to stop here with video 3 and start with video 4 with actually doing the calculation.